How's that? Is that a good le is that a good noise? Good level of music? It was just kind of loud. Yeah, I think it's probably fine. Hello! Hi! Hi John! Welcome to my stream. We, uh, since people asked me to do some, finish some whips, that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm gonna finish this piece, the thing that I started working on last week, um, cause I've been swamped. <laughs> it's okay, Turbanduin. I'm so glad that you are here, no matter what. Also, thanks for shouting me out. That's awesome. Time zones are hard, I totally understand. I, I'm so glad you can watch. Yeah, the, like literally the first time I um, announced my streaming, I accidentally typed EST instead of CST and I felt real bad because that is not my time zone. Cause... Typing. I'm, we're real, I'm glad you can make it to Panduin and I'm very glad that you're much excited. Uh, John, yeah, we're gonna be finishing this uh, piece called, that I titled The Best Date because obviously, it's sort of a little bit of close to six spoilers, but like, I'm sure you already know that Luma and Cass are already the cutest things ever. So I'm gonna finish this piece, which I'm mostly done with, I just gotta do the background. And that'll be fun, because we've never done something like, we haven't done a background piece yet. You've seen me do sketches and line art and the beginning of coloring, but not the end of coloring. So that should be fun. And then I'm probably going to work on this uh, wonderful piece that I thought we were gonna work on the first string, but it didn't happen. I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit because I'm gonna be hunching over more. Like, don't fall light. There we go. Okay. Yes, you are gonna. It's gonna be real cute. Um, and then. Yes. 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 I haven't finished this, or barely started it, and then if I have time, which I probably won't, I might work on some character designs for my comics. So let's start working. All right. So yeah, basically what's going to be happening is I'm going to figure out the, um, because the bodies are all pretty much done, and the shading and all that stuff. So I'm just going to start making window cracks. Because, you know, what's more romantic than a B and E? Hello! Welcome! Hi Lynette! Welcome to my stream. We're watching we're gonna be drawing cute things. As always. Always cute things. Uh, I have to find the layer. But yeah, how's everyone? How's everyone's week been? How's everything going with it? Okay. It's probably the music. I'll turn down the music. You read it, dear Pedro, and I'm so glad. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it. Tico is uh, oh, my favorite. <laughs> um. He's one of the actual first characters that I ever came up with because I actually started drawing his race concept in one of my anthropology classes because we were talking about like light levels and how people, different things like evolved. I don't think we were talking about like skin tones and like evolved cultural evolutions um, mixed with um, things. So it's, that was where I came up with Kiko's design and kind of like tweaked it and made him much cuter and I love him so much. He's such a smart ass. And there's gonna be much more of him in you're hopefully gonna be in chapter two, there's gonna be a lot more character interaction. So hopefully you'll get to see the rest of the crewmates, and I'm very excited for you to see them. Um I mostly unpack okay. I'm just finishing Yes, I, yes, I love drawing background characters. I'm glad you like the shifty uh, person in front of the bar. Yeah, I, um, there's definitely gonna be some, some 
there's one bef in between chapter one and chapter two there's going to be an intermission that sort of kind of talks a bit about the planet they were on so hopefully you'll get to see some things and maybe uh they come up later again so we don't know i'm very excited anyways i really like it i love drawing background characters there's so many weird things in the there's so many like weird characters in the background a lot of them are the blue cat people because they're fun to draw <laughs> Um, but I really like the lizard-looking people with, the, like, the long tails and the interesting hats, and there's very soon gonna be just, like, a snake person in the background that I'm very excited for, because I was just like, what's a good alien? A snake. Um, okay, I'm mostly unpacking, I'm just finishing a piece of writing the Keelan inspired. Oh, that's so cute! I'm glad that you're mostly unpacked now. I'm so I'm glad that the moving went okay and you avoided the hurricane, John. That's good. That would have been bad. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to breaking some windows. If my Photoshop will not be laggy. Finn's coming in and moving things in my room. He's not only a moderator in chat, but also a moderator of my living space. Uh, I'm glad you think so. Yeah, I love just... I have so much just in my head about the universe that I know more about the universe than the plot of the story, which is bad to admit, but I have so many different race concepts and there's a certain race that's gonna come up in chapter two that i'm super excited for because oh they're they're just gonna look so interesting and weird and they're gonna be like they're gonna it's they're gonna be taxing to draw which i've done to myself but i'm very excited for it We found out that the hurricane mostly missed where, um, where we were, but we had to leave way early to avoid traffic. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you were able to leave early and that, like, you didn't have to wait instead. But yeah. I live in a place where evacuation traffic is not a thing. Because I love Minnesota. We have no natural disasters people are always like, oh, you have tornadoes, but, like, not really. <laughs> not bad ones. We've got some, the most bad one that happened was when I was in, like, middle school, so that was, like, 10 plus years ago, so. Okay. Yes, people flee from the mosquitoes. I guess you could technically call that a natural disaster because we have too many. We have too many. I'm totally missing the chat. Like, this is... Today's a fun day, guys. Um... <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, the, also the last couple panels of the Phoenix are awesome. I love the shot of her falling when she jumps. I'm so glad you like it! Yeah, that is one of my... F that was one of my favorite things to draw. And in my first... That... The panel of her yelling jump, um, when, like, falling off the building, she, um, that was one of the things where... I wanted it to look perfect, so I spent so much time on that single panel. I absolutely, absolutely love that panel. It's one of my favorites. And um, having her falling through the city was very, very fun to draw. I loved all of those different angles that her body was in. That was really fun. Um... And I'm glad- I'm really glad you like them, John. Um, nothing is ever a dead end is also immen- is immensely quotable. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Cassidy is one of those characters that is very much, like, uh, reckless. And is just super quotable. I think- I kind of picture Cassidy as sort of like a mix between, like, Cass and, like, Cass and... 
And Cass in the reckless part. I'm trying to think of a good character that she, like, I don't know. Cassie just has that very reckless teen, I don't know. She's a very get shit done, but have fun doing it kind of person. Um, and yeah, nothing is ever a dead end because life is fun and I'm glad you like it. That was one of the things where I was, um, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if that was in the original script or I was just like, that's, I just thought of it in the moment and I was like, that's too good. I have to put that in. Um, also I live, <laughs> those things will carry off small children in the wrong season. Yeah. I mean, ticks used to be really bad. Maybe they're still bad. I don't go into the woods that often anymore. I used to. I used, like, during Renfest, ticks were, like, the worst. Um, I used to live in Ohio, which is where I learned that insurance companies distinguish between funnel clouds and tornadoes. Huh. Damn, Ohio. That's rude. Too many lakes for them to breed. Yeah. We have too much standing water in Minnesota for mosquitoes to thrive. Um, Keynotes being they don't pay for funnel cloud damage. That's really annoying. Yeah, because there's been funnel clouds in Minnesota. There was only, there was one year, I think, uh, in middle school, not during, it was another time. Middle school was a weird time. There was one time when there was a tornado. A tornado that took out like a block of houses but that was it because it was like it just like touched down and then went back up and then there was what people what we called like the minnesota hurricane which it really wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal but like um it was just like torrential winds it was like the sky had got all green and it like literally it and it was like raining like buckets and it kind of and I, when you look outside since there's so many trees in minneapolis it kind of looked like a weird rainforest feel in a storm and there was just winds bucket like literally going diagonal and like once it stopped no one could like get anywhere because trees had just like fallen all over the road um and like we just have we have so much trees in Min so many trees in minnesota so like at one point, they had, like, just redone the sidewalks, and so they had cut some roots of some trees, and they just went flat right over. And it hit some people's cars, but in my neighborhood, a lot of people were really lucky because it didn't, like, hit cars, and it only, like, barely clipped roofs and houses. So, like, there was barely any damage, but we c people couldn't get around for, like, a day because, <laughs> like, the city had to go and, like, pick up and chop up all of these, like, huge trees and get them out of the road. Those mosquitoes are buff. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, hi, hi, Lemon Twist. Sorry, I've been talking. Hi. Gosh, today is great. So many people are here. Welcome, 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 everyone. Yeah, Cass and Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly is very um, Cassidy, but imagine like a young. Cass and Malcolm Reynolds plus, like, I guess kind of, like, Duke's age, sort of? Like, very, like, that sort of thing. That's Firefly. I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of things, so reading my comic will probably be like, oh, Brie was definitely thinking of that specific thing from that specific sci-fi thing, because I consume much, many sci-fi things, including Firefly and Doctor Who and all of the sci-fi RPGs on Geek and Sundry. So there's a lot of things that is very motifs of those things in my thing. Um, let's check Midwest mosquito season dates before visiting. Midwest mosqu um, mosquito season is um, end of June to middle of September, usually. Basically, um, because that's that's usually how long summer is um it can like with global warming now we're like if <laughs> with global warming and climate change you can actually really tell in the midwest because um our winter like winter and summer start earlier slash later um because it's like de it's like shifting we still have the, like the seasons but it's definitely shifting and then like winter is no longer like a steady thing it's like either you are freezing or it's 30. Like, 
it's either 40 below or 30. And those are not good, like, ranges for plant life to be in. Like, you usually want, like, a good steady cold winter that, like, has its, like, ups and downs and not just, like, a rapid heart monitor <laughs> of temperature. So, with that, our summer has been getting pushed back towards, like, end of September slash um, mid-October, and our summer has been pushed to, like, late June. And I know that's, like, oh, Minnesota has always been that way, but it hasn't. It usually started in, like, early May to, like, end of September, but now it's, like, poop, pushed back. Um, it's mostly the end of summer and late spring, but if you're not, if you're not standing near water, it's not so bad. Yeah. You have to be standing near water or, like, in forests, um, especially after, like, we get a lot of rain also, so if you are in a lot of forest areas, then there can be more mosquitoes. But usually it's pretty okay. Just bring up a lot of bug spray. They're not necessarily gonna hurt you, other than you're gonna get welts if you're not used to them. There's no malaria here, so you're fine. <laughs> um, took a classmate's roof off, as well as most of the trees on their block. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> um, yeah. It was that, yeah, that sounds like a lot. That was a very interesting summer. Um, I shouldn't said it didn't count because they did math and the, decided the touchdown wasn't long enough. Wow, that really sucks. Damn you insurance companies for not caring about funnel clouds, because even if they're short, they can actually do a lot of damage. They're not as bad as, like, there's a tornado museum here in Minneapolis. I don't remember where it is. I just remember, I, I, like, I remember having, like, a huge fear of tornadoes when I was younger. Um, because of, like, we had, like, constant tornado drills and things, which is good, because you should be prepared. But, I've never had an experience of a tornado. Um, but they, um, there's literally a museum that's, like, a house that's, like, turned upside down. And it's like you can see like the inside, and it's like, and there's like a tor like a huge like tornado funnel like thing that they've built. It's not the science museum. They have a giant tornado funnel that you can um, control, but that's not what I'm talking about. They have like it's literally it literally just shows like the amount of a damage a tornado can do, and that even if you go in the basement, there's still a thing that like a possibility. But this is for like big flat areas. Because Minneapolis has so many trees and so many tall built and has really tall buildings, really tall. But like, it's not like a flat area. There's too many trees and buildings for actual tornadoes to have enough space to um, have that much air um, airflow. And I'm not a scientist, but like, there's too many uh, buildings for that to actually get a thing. So we get a lot of possibly get funnel clouds, which Lynette says, and it sucks that they don't have insurance for that, because that happens more often than a regular tornado. Um, sorry. I thought I should probably get working on this. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty chill. I don't know. Minneapolis is a lot bigger than people probably think. I mean, I talk about Minneapolis every stream because I love it here. <laughs> um, but yeah. Lemon twist. Definitely come to the Midwest at some point. You should. And not something that a lot of people think of definitely doing. They are a major U.S. city. And no one knows that we exist, really. Unless that you, like, pay attention to other things. But, like, if you just ask, like, the general populace of the U.S., that's not even, like... The History Center. Okay, thanks, Finn. I did not know. I remember going there in elementary school. But, yeah, there's, like, a tornado room in the History Center. Which is really cool. 
Yes. There's so many, like, I think only, like, recently has the Midwest been getting praise because there's so many creatives that have made their, like, debut, like, Neil Gaiman, I don't know if he still lives there, but he used to live, he used to come to Convergence, which is interesting. Like, my parents met him before he was, like, super popular. Um, and, like, one of our, my family friends is an author that walks his dogs. So that's fun. Um, uh, um, but yeah, there's, like, tons of creative people in the Twin Cities and the Midwest. And not a lot of people really acknowledge that. I think it's become way more of a thing recently because so many people have are making a name for themselves in creative fields, but there's still this whole like push that like you can be a creative in Minnesota or in the twin in the Twin Cities or in uh, the Midwest, but you have to move to California to make a name for yourself. And I don't like that, but <laughs> you have to do something creative in the winter not die of boredom. That is true. That's very true. We have to sustain ourselves somehow. <laughs> I mean, luckily we have schools and stuff, but once you're an adult, limitations breed creativity. 100%. That's also why, like, so many Nordic countries are, like, so interesting in terms of creative output, um, because of the whole limitations thing. Um, because I, because I, I didn't even realize that until I was, like, looking at, like, artist residencies, and, like, half of them are in just, like, Sweden or Norway or Greenland or whatever, and I'm like, huh, that's cool. I would love to go there someday. That'd be so dope. Also, let me know if the music is too loud. I'm not wearing my headphones right now because it's too loud for me, but I turned the, it off. I turned it down on the um, Streamlabs, so hopefully it's okay for you guys. And also, this way I can just hear my voice better and see if I'm talking too loud or whatever. Um, let's see. Okay, thanks, thanks for letting me know. in my life. Honestly, not much. <laughs> I've been busy trying to find work and things. Um, school has just started for people in my life, not me, because I graduated. But since I graduated early, it's been interesting because most of my friends are still in college, so, and I still live where I went to college. Um, so, like, <laughs> Yes, I've been doing commissions. Not that kind of... I've been doing, um, like, uh, indie RPG commissions for people. I met some people at Gen Con that needed some, so it's been really fun to do that. And if you pay attention to my Twitter soon, I will be posting uh, some work I've done for that. So that'd be fun. I just want to wait until it comes out on Drive RPG before I do that, because... Um, that's what we're doing. Oh, this is also the Dadanen family. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. <laughs> you are downstairs. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, a lot of my friends are still. And that was Finn laughing at my comment. Um, he, uh, I've been, so yeah, college started for a lot of my friends. And that's been really interesting because um, the people that I'm doing the board game with are some of the people from, I'm from college. So they, they've been, we've been focused, jeez, I keep losing my train of thought. They, um, we've been focusing a lot on the board game in the past week or so. Um, sorry, there's people shouting about Katamari downstairs. Um, they're in red. Grad. <laughs> I read. I know it's supposed to say grad school, but I really like rad school. That's a good. That's a good slang term for grad school. <laughs> I'm in rad school. Um, a bunch of my friends are in grad school this fall, and I'm just out here applying to schools and subbing. I mean, that's good too. If you're good, I always love substitute teachers. Always, and. And you're applying to schools for an actual teacher job, I'm assuming. On the topic of TTRPGs, I have a cypher game later tonight. And and you are nervous. Ooh, why are you nervous? I I haven't played Cypher myself yet, but um some of my some people from Gen Con. Oh no no! Oh god! It's okay. I just hit my desk. Not heading to grad- Oh, you're heading to grad school next year. That's cool. Well, I hope you enjoy grad school. Yeah. Tell me all about the cypher game that you're nervous about. Maybe we can talk it through and you won't be so nervous, Japan doing. Because, yeah, I've never- I mean, I've never played cypher. I want to, though. Cyberpunk superhero, cyberpunk superhero, cyberpunk superhero. Yes! Did you know that cyberpunk superheroes are so good? Because I did, and I love them. Can you tell? participating in an underground we're participating in an underground hover car street race with absolutely no rules other than be if oh goodness just worried we accidentally killed someone I mean that is, are you playing it or are you running it but I mean that's like that is definitely stressful and it's like the mag board that's like the mag boarding episode is Twist of six, and I am so here for it. Playing, ooh, yeah, that could definitely be stressful. I'm actually hoping to play a cypher game at some point in the future. Hopefully soon, not cyberpunk superheroes, but it'll be really fun. And cypher is a very interesting system that I'm learning. Okay, you can't just tell me this, John. Now I'm excited. There's, there's a, there's a sport in Lucas's cipher universe that's like this, John. I'm so down for that. Though I feel like my character wouldn't do that, but I am really excited. No! Don't redact these good juicy tidbits! We, if, for those who don't know, I'm some, um, I'm going to be probably playing a cypher game with John and Lucas at some point in the future. We don't have like a date or anything, but we created characters like a week ago, and I am so pumped because it's really fun. And 
I'm really tempted to draw that character very, the character that I created for them very soon. Yeah, it's not gonna be like streamed or anything, it's just gonna be a fun game. Because it's these, it's people that we made friends with at Gen Con and had really lots of fun playing with. I.e. this weave, this weave, uh, whip that I created. So, we wanted to play some more at some point in the future. And, uh, Lucas created a cyberpunk, or a cypher universe, so. So. I'm very excited. Anyways, I don't know a lot about it, and I don't know if Lucas wants to, me to talk about his universe or not, but I'm very excited, and John in the chat is being mean to me and telling me cool things that I don't get to do. You guys are a menace. You guys are a menace. These, this, this is John and Caitlin. Menace. They are menaces. They made me draw a tandem scooter. How, why, why? why? <laughs> it's wonderful, but why? I'm the normal one riding a bike. And then both Finn and Lucas are rollerblading. <laughs> because twins, my dude. And Olivia's character's on a pogo stick. It was- that was one of my favorite moments of that game, though. Because everyone was like, how are we getting there? And we all described separate, different ways of transportation, and they were all ridiculous, except for my bike. I'm like, I'm riding a bike, but I did have a camera strapped to the front with- it was basically like, I was recording everything. We are in the race to make an appearance to the common people to get them on our side so the corpse can't rile them up against us. That's a good idea. I mean, I feel like that's inadvertently what Luma did. <laughs> Live stream the whole event, yes. Media is our best asset. Yeah. I'm Dope VA. <laughs> I'm so here for this. Is that too cracked? No, I think that's probably okay. I'll just. I got kind of carried away. <laughs> Do you guys have superhero names? Or are you guys being like Cass, Luma, and everyone else that doesn't have superhero names and just forgot that that's part of the deal for being a superhero? Ooh! Costume reveals. Okay, how, how many people are caught up on Close to Six? I know, John, you are not, so I won't do a lot of, um, I won't say a lot of spoilers for that, but the past few episodes has been very, um, My Hero Academia-esque in, uh, le in leaning of the, what the future might unfold if they win, and I'm so here for that. <laughs> so, Okay. I mean, it, I'm not gonna spoil, like, big plot points or anything, but, like, there's some very interesting things that they've been going on and some things. If anyone has seen My Hero Academia or read the manga or whatever, there's some interesting. Yes. So, for the finale of season three. We can hope. I know it's probably already pre-recorded based on Eric's cryptic message. So, I'm very excited to see what happens. I'm also extremely nervous. I'm 
so I'm so excited for next week. I wait, I want there to be like a viewing party. I don't know. We gotta start spamming uh, Ethan Sundry for a season four. But I don't know. Cause I mean, it feels like we need to see the. I feel like we need to see the finale of season three before we can start doing that. Mainly because it is so good. It is so good. It's definitely like it. Def it definitely feels like they just kind of like so much. So much happened in like a 24-hour period. It was intense. Um. Uh, but yeah. If anyone has seen the anime My Hero Academia, if they, I want. I want, I want to see the, that cyberpunk future super badly. <laughs> also, if you like anything that has to do, if you like anything of the superhero we and also anime, I highly rec recommend watching My Hero Academia because it's very intriguing in terms of morality and um, how being what a super what being a superhero actually means in a society that's flooded with them so it's very it's very interesting this is breeze let's talk about anime portion of the show i don't know i hope he does but he's still you know he's still working the reason why he couldn't do it is because he found a new job. So I don't know if he will. I mean, I hope so. And if not, he might be a recurring guest character or what have you, but... I don't know. There hasn't been any reveals, and I know, according to... Based on Gen Con, I know there's a lot of things that they haven't announced for anything yet, so... We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. I don't know what's already been decided or if anything has happened because it is, I mean, I respect that it's pre, that it's pre-recorded so like things happen. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know anything about their schedules, so. What their lives are like, so. Don't know, but hopefully. Because they've went through a lot of trouble to get him. They announced him this week for... They were funny. Because they had obviously been back from Gen Con, but this was like. They were pre. Apparently, they had pre recorded this like a month ago at least. So it was probably like right when they got back from Gen Con, so. I don't know. They were really funny though, because they're like, I have been to this place, and I will be going to this place, or I am talking to you now after I have done this thing that I have yet to do in a month. of cracks to see what I should do. I was hanging around the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I was around there as the Monday Cook Games. Yeah, I was around there too. He, um, during the meetup, he said that he had, he was, yeah. He said there was something coming up and things 
I'm, he definitely, he said to me that there was stuff coming up that he couldn't talk about, but he really was very excited about it and really, really, really wanted to talk to us about it, but he couldn't, and that, um, he's not, and that, um, he confirmed that, uh, season four had not been renewed yet. I don't know if it has been renewed now, but at Gen Con, there had been no confirmation that we were getting a season four or not. So, which is making it very confusing. So, cause I don't know if they have like, because of that, they planned for this to be like the end. And if they get in season four, they have an idea. Or if like, they still, they don't even know if this is the end or not. So I'm not entirely sure. But he was very excited about whatever's coming up next. So be very excited no matter what. There better be more, for sure. I'm not trying to be like, all these, I'm not trying to spread rumors or hear say anything. I'm just saying what he told me at the meetup. And I'm sure he told other people, so. I don't think it's a secret. They're so lovely and wonderful and are trying to be as transparent as possible and I love them for it. But because of and NDAs and all of that junk, we just have no way of knowing. Stay hydrated, everyone. This is not my Hail Hydrate bo water bottle, but it's close. Um, okay. But yeah, they're super great. I love them. I think, okay, I think I'm going to change the background color. Um, I think I'm going to make it purple and orange because purple and orange is obviously the better colors. And if you read my comic, you can also tell that I really love, also if the, th I love purple and orange so much. You can tell by the fact that my layout is also purple and orange. Um, my guess is that they will take a break from this place this season or two of Invisible Sun. Huh. What makes you say that, Dirk Not that I don't think that'd be awesome. I'm just curious. Because that'd be really cool. Because Invisible Sun sounds really cool. And because I also know that they have like a really good relationship with all of the companies that they have done games for, so maybe they would be getting sponsored to do something for like like how LA by Night got sponsored by the people that did um, the uh, Vampire the Masquerade. So I don't know. Okay, that is too bright. So we're gonna go on that. Yeah. Yeah. They're all really excited about a lot of things. I know that they also really want to play, like, Chain- Um. I was just gonna say that, Dervandwin. Yeah, Changeling the Dreaming, that they also really enjoy, so. I mean, either way, Changeling the Dreaming- Like, I have yet to see a good represent- Like, a good, good, like, fey game of any sort. Or, there's not a lot of good fey content out there. And I would die to see a good fake campaign. That'd be so amazing. And also Invisible Sun sounds so surreal and awesome and just like perfect for the way that Eric story tells. So either way, anything that they produce, I am there for. I am, I've been here since TBD days. I am here for the long haul, my friends. <laughs> exactly, they're pandering. We all love them. Alright. That looks pretty good. I might do some. But 
I really hope there is another season. I'm curious about how that works, because this was, um, because I was under the impression that half the joy of this one is the quality of the physical game bits. That is true. I'm gonna look up Invisible Sun just so I know that I'm for sure what we're talking about, because I think I do, but I'm not sure. Yeah, cause yeah, this is the one that we're talking about. This is the one where people can have like books for heads, right? It looks like it. At least I'm sure. But yeah, there's a lot of game pieces, so I'm not sure. This this song that it's playing right now. I'm glad you- I'm glad you like it. At least, yeah. It's a good drawing song. I love drawing to, like, a beat electronica. Because <laughs> it just makes everything so feel way more things. But yeah. It'd be really, like, I feel like that'd be something- It'd definitely be a way different format of a game, though. For sure. So yeah, I'd be interested. So yeah, I would be interested to see what they do with it. Oh my god, it is so amazing. I, the art for that game when they showed it on Callisto 6 was like... So good. I love, I just... I, I hope that if they do play it, Sam gets to be someone with a book for a head. Um, there's a lot of emotive energy things to stuff like that. Like, it's fun to move to it, whether it's exercise or drawing. Yeah. As long as your body can move to it. And I... I don't do a lot of it on stream, but usually when I'm drawing myself and listening to music, I like, just bob my head while I draw. Maybe I do it on stream. I don't know. <laughs> if I do, I'm sorry for the distracting uh, camera movements. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, I really hope that they play something that lets uh, Sam and Lisa do space shenanigans because they really love those things and they, I, I just, I want Sam's space facts and I really hope we'll get them eventually. Or they could just do a show talking about space with no game, I'd watch that too. Yeah.
such a delight. As I'm sure John can attest. <laughs> You guys really do. That was, if you've, you've been, I'm sure you guys been to her streams and hear her talk about the uh, Lasers and Feelings game they played as well as, I don't know if she talked about the Weave game we played or anything like that, but they were twins and it was really fun. We were playing Goblins Are Jerks and she had some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure half of the crazy ideas that we had in our game were because of her. And. I mean. She's a very excited artist and creative person. I'm a very tired artist and creative person. And yeah, and the L uh, laser thing was probably the best game of any. Oh my gosh. It sounded so cool. I, I'm sad that I wasn't there, but that was on, that was on Friday. So I was at the, the Critical Role Live. Which in itself, which in itself was a, an amazing experience so but it sounded amazing to critical role life I'd say it's definitely worth it. Just to be in a room with that many people with that much sheer energy is just unimaginable. And it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a chair for four hours. Like, at all. It just, you're just experiencing such a raw form of like entertainment. It like it definitely feels like watching a sports game, but it's storytelling. I I wish I had the half ha had half the energy Caitlin had the day like, day, like with like one major task per day too if I had time to plan for it. I don't know what you consider a major task, but yeah. Um as I have a part time job at the moment, I a lot of my energy goes into that, which is sorting boxes at a library. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I kind I kind of push myself to um get things done, but also I also don't sleep very well. So I I I go to bed at like two or three every day. It's not a good idea. <laughs> I totally feel that, you know. I've definitely lost my college steam. I, cause I, used, I used to be able to like sit in the uh, drawing lab for hours and just crank out like four pieces a day. And that is something that this I have lost this summer. Possibly just through sleep deprivation. But I've gotten out, I've got, been able to crank out all this stuff. But also, in college, I didn't spend my time emailing and looking for work. Yeah. So, that's also, like, how I spend 90% of my time is just emailing people and being like, Hi, I exist. The life of a freelance artist. 
Um, I'm falling asleep by 11 because I'm an old man. I mean, I wish I could fall asleep by 11, but I have this horrible thought process of I just need to like get as many things done in a 24 hour per year. I'm, it's, it's a bad self, it's a bad, it's a bad spiral that I have given to myself. So. But, being an adult instead of a college student takes up spaces on your medical and creative power student. It really does. And you don't, no one prepares you for that. Because especially right after, uh, out of college, you're like, yeah, I can do things. I was able to do things a lot, and then you get out of college and you're like, oh my gosh, being an adult that has to try to function in our society is just terribly exhausting. But, in other news, um, what is other, what is other news that I have? Who knows? Is anything really cool happening in my life? Um, not really. It's fall. Things are happening. Um, I have a board game. I'm working on because everyone is back from their hometowns now. Um, oh, I'm gonna be tabling at a convention in uh, October. That'll be fun. It's probably it's not a very like well-known convention or anything. It's um, called Falcon. It's a thing that um, the uh, Mini the Minnesota Comics, the Minnesota Comic Book Association does every year, where um, it's free to be a creator and ten dollar entry fee, and you can just go and um, hang out with comic creators and things in the Twin Cities, and it's really cool. And there's lots of very good artists in the Twin Cities, so it'll it would it's a very cool thing to go to. If for some reason you're in the Twin Cities on October 5th. But yeah, it's not like a huge convention or anything. But I think it's a good place to get a start at selling artwork. Um, oh, thanks, Finn, for putting in Elemental Spark. Yeah, we've been doing character reveals on Twitter um, of the pre preliminary artwork that I've done for the game so far. Most of the stuff I've done so far is just preliminary artwork for, like, um, advertising and making demos. A lot of it's not finished and will be finished by the time the Kickstarter goes out, but I will not be working on that on this stream because that's not something for a stream to do, but I'd say keep a lookout if you like board games, which if we're... If you're watching me and we're in the same circles, you probably do. And you went to Gen Con, obviously. There's also there was also a picture of the demo that came out um, on Twitter as well. So I have the Twitter link to my uh, Twitter bio and also um, in my as a command in chat. So if you want to check it out, I highly I highly recommend it. Ugh. I highly recommend doing so. Thanks for stopping by, John. I should probably—I'll be done with this very soon. I'm just um, 
do in the highlights, but we'll be getting to the weave piece very, very soon. So have fun exercising uh, and see you soon. The weave piece will be getting there very soon, I promise. Probably won't be able to finish it, but because that's a lot of characters, but we'll get there. It's definitely a lazy day, feels like, which is kind of nice. It's a nice, relaxing stream. I like being able to just hang out and talk about things. Is there any is there anything that anyone's really excited about that's coming out soon or that's gonna be happening soon or anything? I'm really excited for Planet Zoo. If anyone knows what that is. I'm kind of a zoo tycoon nerd, so. Come November, I'm probably going to stream playing Planet Zoo because that'll make it feel like it's work <laughs> and that I don't actually have to um, feel bad about spending my time playing with cute animals and making zoos because I played Zoo Tycoon uh, like almost religiously as a child <laughs> and I'm constantly torn up that my uh, computer updated to Windows 10 because that means that I can't play Zoo Tycoon anymore because it's only on um, because it's only on uh, Windows 7 and they haven't updated it or given it to Steam or anything like that to be updated for Windows 10 so Planet Zoo will be my savior I hope I've seen lots of gameplay trailers and it seems very cool. But maybe no one else cares about that, so. Oh well. And hello, my 10th viewer. Welcome to my stream. We're doing drawing art. And um, it's gonna be a lot of unfinished things that I haven't had time to finish yet. And we're just kind of chatting and having a nice lazy Saturday listening to cool stuff. I'm just chilling, so. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. The chicken rocket planner looks like it shapes up to be a worthy successor. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think it's going to be exactly like Zoo Tycoon, but I do think that it will have a lot of the same feelings. It won't have a lot of the same features because it's ultimately it's ultimately using the planet coaster system. It definitely seems like it's going to be way more, uh, like, way more animal based which is good which is good i really like that but in zoo tycoon had a lot less customization which not that i don't want customization i just feel like customization could get buggy and i'm worried about that but from what i've seen from gameplay trailers it looks like it'd be really cool and they have other things so i am excited and i hope that it does well because i may or may not have bought 
the deluxe edition so I can get the beta in a few weeks. Because I'm not obsessed at all. <laughs> I don't think I can play the beta on stream now. So I probably won't be doing that. But when it comes out, if you guys want to chill with me and play and look at cute animals and make a zoo. That'd be really fun. Like, cause half of the games that I play are just simulation games, but I'm also really wanting to play some RPGs on stream. Mainly cause I um, want to have a reason to play RPGs on for long periods of time i.e. Pillars of Eternity, two, two specifically, one, I can't get past the tutorial. I feel like that says more about me than the game, though. Um, and two, I've already started a nice game, and I just love the pirate feel, like, the, it's just so nice. And so I really want to play Pillars 2 on stream. I also really want to play, um, Shadowrun. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. I accidentally did a thing. Where's my streamlabs? There it is. <laughs> I lost my streamlabs for a second. Um, buy a mutant. What is buy a mutant? Or may maybe I should know what that is. Oh no. I need to look that up. Can you give me like a link or something? Cause that sounds cool. That game looks like it'll be a ton of fun. Yeah. Anything with mutant in the title sounds really cool. Unless it's about shooting things. I'm not really good at shooting games. The only like shooting game that I play is Overwatch. And that's with other people that really carry me. I play Arisa or Diva because tanks are my friends. They have my back. I am the end. Let's look. Um. Ooh, that looks really cool. Just the first part of it looks cool. That's so cute! Oh my gosh. This looks dope! I love the art! It's like a little rocket! Oh my god. Is it like an open world RPG? Probably. I can look at the- oh my gosh, it even has- Oh, pretty. It even has pretty space stuff. Oh man, I love it. About. News. Okay, that didn't help. Um. It doesn't have any plague. A plague is ruining the land and the tree of life is blue. Oh my goodness. Hell yeah. That looks dope. I'd love to see it. It looks super pretty.
as a narrator and you level up by mutating your character. Huh. I saw another game like that recently. I saw another game like that recently. It was a tra- I don't remember where I saw it. I think it was like a trailer or something. I think it was free for Steam recently. It was like, you are a person and there's different mutations that you can get. And you're trying to like solve a mystery, but you like can mutate yourself in many different ways and you can get like, interesting arm and an interesting leg and it gives you different powers to fight your enemies and stuff also, which is one of my favorite things in games there's not many games that have a narrator which i think is kind of sad because that'd be really fun i'm uncomfortable okay i really liked in pillars 2 if i really liked that um uh I really like Ashley's narration for big um, cinematic moments in Pillars 2. That's one of my favorite things. Oh, that, one of my favorite things part about that game. Have I played Transistor? I have not played Transistor. My, I watched my dad play Transistor, but it is on my list of things to play. I can't. I know the basic storyline, I think, but I would really want to play it myself because I haven't seen that itself. I haven't because I haven't played it myself, but it looks really, really cool. And I, when I was like. When I was younger, I watched my dad play a little bit of it. A lot. Yeah, it's on my list. I can. I have bought a lot of games recently that I have yet to play. would be it's so because i love pretty games and just like running around and having like a good storyline which masquerada um that a thing that was like announced a long long time ago that matt was in and for critical Role, mass i highly highly recommend playing it it is so beautiful it has a very interesting storyline it really like lets you explore with like how characters it's like I, the only gripe I have about the game is that it was too short. I would love for it to be bigger and more massive and being able to actually explore that world because it is beautiful. It has such an interesting and rich storyline. I highly recommend playing Masquerada. Do it. I played it. I binge played it when I was sick after I got back from Rome this summer and it was beautiful. It took me, I want to see how actually long. I'm going to tell you how long it took me to play. Um games. Uh, it? Masquerada. It took me 35 hours to play. I highly recommend playing it. It is beautiful. Wait, I have so many games that I just haven't played yet. I'm looking at my list. I mean, I've played, like, I haven't, like, fin I haven't finished any game other than Masquerada recently. I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley because it's just nice to chill to. I also have Moon Hunters that I really, really, really want to play. I have Pyre, which I also really want to play. And then Shadowrun that I, I've started, but I haven't, like, I barely started. I also really want to play um, Titan Souls and Submerged. I also really want to play A Short Hike because it sounds so cute. And I just love those sort of things. And I want to play 
I want to play way more Monster Prom. I've only played a few games of Monster Prom, and I also backed it on Kickstarter, so I have... I'll, I'll get the beta soon. So I really, really want to play Monster Prom. That might be something I want to play on stream. I'm just, I've been struggling with the need to get the Doctor Who VR game. Yeah, that sounds super dope. And I would love to do that, also. Yes. Short Hike looks adorable, and I really want to play it. I also highly recommend... Um, I'm actually gonna... Sorry, I'm just tweeting my stream again. Um, but after I do that, I have something that I highly recommend. Um, alright, uh, retweeting, 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 that's, that's my life. Um, Um, I played the demo, and really what I'm saying is I want a VR model of the interior of the TARDIS. That would be so cool! Oh my goodness! That would be so cool! With 13 telling- oh my god, that'd be so cool. Man. That'd be so dope. I need to watch the new- I, I've seen the first few episodes of the newest season of Doctor Who. I have not seen the rest of it. I have, to, I, have to, I have to wait. But. Oh man, that sounds so cool. But, um, a game that I highly, highly recommend if you like games that are cute and peaceful and that are actually art related in a way. I really, 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 really recommend a game called East Shade. You are literally a nomadic artist that is walking around this beautiful island and doing, basically doing painting commissions and exploring, and the way that it works is you literally have to go discover parts of the island to get inspiration to paint things. It is beautiful. I have not finished it yet. I want to, but I also want to stream it, and it's definitely one, like, I could just start streaming, I could just, like, hop right in the middle of what I've been doing, and ha no one has any context, but it is beautiful. I highly re recommend it. It's a little buggy because it's a very small team, but I, it should They've been doing a lot of updates recently, and it's been getting a lot better, and if you want to play a very nice, peaceful game with beautiful uh, artwork and beautiful renderings and everything, play East Shade. Do it. It is so pretty. It is- it should be on the top three things on your game stream wish, wish list. I- I- I had that on one of my top three things, um, as my wish list, like, a few months ago. And then I, like, finally caved and was like, I'm just gonna buy it because it looks too pretty for me not to buy it. And the description of, like, being an artist and having- oh, gosh, it's so pretty. And you- and they're- like, they're all animals and it's, like, really interesting. And, like, it's all about, like, puzzles and exploration and there's no fighting whatsoever. And it's just beautiful. It's everything that I want in a game. <laughs> and I want more. I, and that's also, like, I know I'm only halfway through, but it's another, another one of those things where I just wish it was longer. Like, I wish there was there was just constantly more to do. Uh, my PC isn't beefy enough, and my PS4 is a brick. Yeah, I understand that. My I have a pretty beefy PS, um, I have a pretty beefy computer, but it has, uh, driver issues. Um, sometimes and storage issues because every, like, 
everything always defaults to my C drive when it should default to my D drive and my C drive because my C drive is full of shit. Uh, current, uh, I also really can't wait for Spirit Fair ever since the E3 trailer. I feel like I saw that, but I'm gonna look it up just to make sure that I know what you're talking about. Once again. Spirit Fair. Yes! I saw it. It looks so pretty. It- Ugh. I want it so bad. It, that's- definitely like that is definitely one of the that's that is a style of game that i can get behind also i mean there's no like information on this one any or anything but um i think it's called witchbrook or something it's made by the same people that did stardew valley it's made by chucklefish and it's Ugh. It looks so pretty. And it's like you actually get to be a witch that like makes spells and you um it's like a Stardew Valley and like a witch simulator every like in everything and I am so down for that because I've ugh. I wanna play a game where I can be like a cute witch and like do things and be in like a school ah I wanna play that so bad. But it's like still in like the development phase, and I'm like, no. It's like Studio Ghibli meets Steven Universe. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to play it so bad. There's so many games I want to play. Why does the universe do this to me? Why must the universe torture me so? Ah, oh, that's too big. I'm really trying to focus on this line. Oh, hi Lucas, welcome! Thank you for coming! Thank you for hanging out! That was really high pitch. I'm sorry. Welcome! I'm sorry you can't stay for long, but I hope whatever you're doing today is cool and awesome and not cleaning out a storage bin. Storage facility, like last time. Can't get this line right. Oh, wow, Lucas appeared. Yay! Hi, Lucas. Welcome. Throw Super Bowl. You gotta catch them all. You just gotta. Also, sorry. The carrot. Did you guys see the character customization for the new Pokemon game? That is, making dinner for a bunch of people is so much more fun than, uh, cleaning out your storage. You have apparently been captured. Well, I think that's up to you if you've been captured. He can, uh, Drapando and Ken throw the Super Bowl, but it is up to you whether or not you accept his, his partnerness. people watching hello everyone we're doing some drawing and just talking about video games and having a good time it's real chill I'm gonna be doing another whip really soon um, I'm just finishing up this one yes I did and it looks great I don't know what you're referring to but okay um and I also really love the camping stuff 
Oh, uh, for the Pokemon thing. I was like, what did I say? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, me too. Yes. I don't have a Switch. My brother has a Switch. And he keeps being like... Because what I usually do is I just kind of acquire game systems after people have stopped using them. But with the Switch being a very relevant console versus the Wii U, I have the Wii U. That, and I I play uh, Breath of the Wild on that because it came out on the Wii U and also Switch, but I have the Breath of the Wild version. And that's all I use the Wii U for. But I don't have a Switch. And with all of these new Nintendo announcements, I'm highly considering buying a, a Switch. And I don't know if that's a good or bad idea. <laughs> I really would like to steal my brother's, but he won't let me because it's still a relevant pink gaming console. And he makes fun of me for stealing things and just assuming that he's gonna get bored with things. Podex is done entering your data, so I'll release you now, Lucas. <laughs> Doesn't it, like, still get registered to the Pokédex even if you just fight it? Or is that wrong? It's been a while since I actually played a legitimate Pokémon game. And then, and now we do this. This is the cute part, everyone. I actually might be. Oh, is that bring up a really fun question? What's everyone's Pokemon typing? Well, like, what type do we like the most? Oh, if I, if I was a Pokemon, what would my type be? Ooh. Um. That's a good question. Hmm. That's a good question. That's hard to know. Um, I'd have to say, weirdly, either fairy or normal. That's because those are very two very different ones. But I don't think I'd be psychic or ground or swimming. I don't know. I feel like fairy is very, like, you don't really know, like, fairy is very... Dirt, dark slash grass, cool. <laughs> hmm. The thing is, there's just so many types of Pokemon. You could be psychic, Lucas. As a GM, I feel like that'd be good for you. <laughs> um, I don't know, I was thinking like fairy or normal, mainly because I love, those are my two favorite types of Pokemon, personally. You can see normal slash fairy. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very Slovian. <laughs> Perfect! Then you're your psychic type, Luke. Psychic. Ugh. Psychic type, Lucas. Hey. 
Um, but yeah. I could also see Flair Fairy flying. For me or Lucas? I could have... Yeah. Flying is like... It's not gonna be a real fairy. I could be a... <laughs> Jokes. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I feel like fairy or normal, possibly flying, would probably be mine. I don't really have, like, a good justification of that, other than I feel like my personality is very... normally eccentric, I guess you could say. If I was a trainer, my most Pokemon, I think, is probably Psychic Ground or Psychic Rock, I'd say. I was thinking that too. I feel like, I feel like just thinking about your type is a lot less of like how you view yourself or the world and just kind of more like on instinct. trainer, I would probably have, what would I have, um, I feel like I'd honestly probably have the same, that same sort of, Well, my favorite, if you've followed me right around when Detective Pikachu came out, you know that my favorite, um, my favorite, uh, uh, Pokemon is Eevee. <laughs> I think it'd be kind of funny to have just a team, just, just of evolutions. Like, Eevee, uh, and then all of the evolutions. I feel like that'd be kind of fun. I'd have a very well-rounded team that way in terms of type advantage, um, but, they're panda and that's so cute, yeah, I, one of my friends wanted to do that for a game that we played, like, a long time ago, and my no monk Aster had a team, oh man, I can probably look it in the drive, but, I think most of it was fighting, I think it was fighting slash fairy types. Yeah, it was a, I think it was like fighting fairy and then I think one normal type. Cause I had a Makuhita and let's see. Oh, I had a Makuhita and Azriel. I'm gonna look it up, because you've inspired me. It is a really fun way to think about it. I haven't done that for any of my other characters. I should do that.
Sorry, I'm just ser I'm just searching for my the the document that one of my friends made of all of our um, characters having the Pokemon teams. This is this is good content, Bray. You're doing a good job. Good content. Good content. Um. Um, 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 good content, good content, good content, good content. Well, I probably shouldn't do this if I can't find it this fast. Um, but I feel like my character had a Makahita and an Az Azriel. <laughs> the bestest content. Um, a Makahita, an Azriel. It was mostly fighting and fairy types. I can't remember all of them, but it was fun. Um,. I'm looking for reference image for this. Um, but yeah. It'd be really fun. What would be your dream Pokemon team? If... I know that might not be something that everyone can answer. You know the evolution. <laughs> Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon. Patreon, Surgeon, and Pudge. That's a good joke, Lucas. I like it. That's funny. <laughs> Watch football live and cable free. It's the best way to stream television. YouTube TV. Try it free. Oh, that was an ad. What? Wrong. Bad. Go back. Sorry, gotta redo the music. Um... Oh my gosh. Is that something that they're actually going to do? Are they going to be making new evolutions? Is that a thing? Because I would love that. I would love it so much. I need more I need more evolutions. I would re that would be amazing. Um, sorry. I'm going to take a quick break from looking at chat to look at a reference image. everyone's saying. I really hope they have they will have one for every type one day. Just saying dragon type Eevee would probably look really fucking rad. It look I really okay. Yes. I feel like a dragon type Eevee would be look would, should definitely play off of the Vapor the Vaporeon desi design with like the tail. Oh my god, that'd be so cool. God, I want there to be an evolution of every type. I mean there should be. I don't know why there isn't. Already. Dang it, I keep hitting the wrong thing. I would love that. Mm hmm. Yes! Steel type Eevee with a blade tail. You are speaking my language. I'm gonna be a trainer with only evolutions. Cause that'd be dope.
blade tail. Blade tail. Blade tail. Blade tail. Lemon Twist is still watching. I hope you recognize this design. Because I did use your thing as a reference image because I loved it so much. Okay, nothing again. I'll be in and out for a while, and then I'll and then I'll be gone. But I'll leave the stream up for the view. Thank you so much, Lucas. That means the world to me. And just pop in whenever you want. We're just hanging out and just gonna have some good time. And also, thank you for last night. Um, I popped in at the very last second, and thank you for acknowledging me. <laughs> oh, and you're very welcome, Lemon. I really, really liked your drawing, and I had. I, I mean. I'm not stealing your idea. I had this idea when I first started this piece, but I just really liked your design and I really wanted to pay an homage to it because I thought it was really cute. And I loved your cast stegosaurus. It was so cute. And... In Monster Hunter World, it's born. Okay. Yes. I... It... I haven't seen that, the, the, the blade tail from that, but is, okay, question. This is very important for me. Is, can you play, can you already play a cat in Monster Hunter? In, or is Monster Hunter I, Iceborne where you can play a cat? I don't know anything about Monster Hunter, because I just thought it was a game about pl killing monsters. I didn't, it, it, please enlighten me about this game, because I saw some gifts that you can watch cats cook, and that has made my life a much better place. Please tell me. I need to know. Thank you for coming. It was nice to see you. You're thinking about extending Rainbow Mansi by half an hour soon. That might be good because I also watch Callisto 6, and I know it's like right after Callisto 6, so I should be able to catch it, but I always like forget and like, okay, I've I, cause I always forget because so much stuff like happens right at the end of Callisto 6 and I'm like, oh, I have to decompress and I'm like, oh crap, I have to watch Ramble Fancy. Well, I don't have. I want to because you guys are great and I would love to chat with you, but I, it's one of those things. So extending it by half an hour would be very helpful for my forgetful brain, especially when it's like 11 here. <laughs> but yeah, things are going. The cats are supporting characters. You can eat in the game to buff yourself before a hunt, and the chef is a big buff cat. Okay, and that's just in Monster Hunter? Is Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter I find two different things? Oh, or... Is that... Or is that, like, an expansion, like, in WoW? Palico Eagle's cat, okay. When you hunt. So, it's just, like, your companion is a Palico? Bye, Lucas. I really like. I hope I'm gonna definitely come by Ramble Nancy next week and talk more about whatever you guys are gonna talk about. That'll be fun. Um. <laughs> I'm not stealing. Don't. T Thank you for saying I'm a genius, but I'm not stealing. I am borrowing because it is your design. Uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne is the new high level expansion. Got it, okay, cool, cool, cool. I don't know anything about Monster Hunter. I knew that it came out, but then I was like, I have no idea about. And like, is it like an RPG or is it like you literally just fight monsters? Not that that wouldn't be cool, but I'm just curious. I 
really want to, okay, because I looked it up a little bit, and it said something about being able to play a pal, I'm going to look it up again, because this is important for me, at playable monster hunter. So there's a thing called Monster Hunter World Palico Cat Character Creation. Is that just because that's your familiar and you can make one? I'm, I'm gonna look it up. They're so cute and I want one. I, you only get one palico, the one you customized right- Oh my gosh. So we- Oh my gosh. Oh, there's Wayne Town or Player's Housing. But it does not approach- Come on, well. Uh, hunt. They support you in their first space to make- Oh my gosh. 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 There's 13 viewers just hearing me gush about being looking at cats. <laughs> and it's kind of sort of just a game about hunting monsters, except that the new story they tell is amazing. You hunt monsters because they endanger their surrounding ecosystems. Yeah, you create your palco together with them. So they heal and buff you and do other useful stuff like taming small wildlife for you to ride. Okay. That is so cute! Would it be bad to just buy Monster Hunter just so I can make a palico? Is that a bad thing? Is that a bad thing to do? Is that a bad waste of money? I mean, I probably still play the game, but like... Oh my god, that sounds so cute! Ah! Uh, Night Lemon, thank you so much for hanging out and chatting with me and letting me be able to use your wonderful artwork as inspiration. Please get some sleep. Bye! Yeah, I bet. Oh, okay, that's on my list of things to put on my Steam wish list. <laughs> I want it now. Is it on Steam or is it on only? Is it on Steam or is it only on um, uh, game consoles? I didn't even look. I don't know. It's on Steam. Okay. This is usually where I get stuff now. Maybe it'll be on a Steam sale soon and I can buy it. There's gonna be a steam sale soon, because it's almost Halloween. in the background. I love the one that looks so nonplussed. <laughs> that is so cute. Also, here's a picture of the Meowskular Chef. That is, in fact, his canon name. I'm melting. <laughs> that is so Oh my god, I love that. That is the cutest thing in the world. Thank you for sharing that with me. I love it so much. <laughs> I have to buy this game now. 
I can probably- I'll even stream it! I'll even stream it and you guys can see it. I'll stream it, because I'm really bad at fighting games, in general. So, that'll be fun. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm not the worst. I can do it, but like... That is so cute though. And this is the aforementioned glove. All right, I gotta click on that link right after I finish the, this Luma Bug legs. Blade tail, blade tail, blade tail. Whoa! Dope. That is really nice. That is so cool looking. Wow, that is really cool. Blade tail, blade tail, blade tail. I love it, that's awesome. That was really cool. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this finished because I should really probably work on the weave thing as well. It also sets its blade tail on fire from time to time by grinding it with its teeth. What? That's insane! Oh, this is also a very important question. Can your palico die? Does it like, do you only get one and then it dies and you just never get one again? Is that a thing? Because if so, <sighs> or is it just, or is it just immune to death because it's too cute? Half off at Humble Bundle right now. Hell yeah. I should get that then. Yeah, seriously, if it's cheap on Humble Bundle, get it from Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle's great. Humble Bundle will is a great place to buy um, cheap games from if that's what you're looking for. I might do that. And they just go KO. Okay, good. I'm glad that they can't fully die because I'll probably spend more time doing my character creation for the cat than myself. The cat must live. It has to. Would it be so cute if I made my cat the cat look like my cat? She's not in here. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. I have, I, I did already make in The Sims 4 with the new pet expansion. Like my first thing that I did was make a cat that looked like Ash. Like the first thing. Heated blade tail. 
What? That literally looks like a geyser of lava. Oh my god. That is awesome. That is super cool. Aw, oh, look at these cute little things. That's amazing. I should definitely buy Monster Hunter World now. From half off at Humble Bundle. Support Humble Bundle. They do really good things. And help, help charities and stuff. So definitely do that. Monster Hunter honestly has some of the coolest hero, and, uh, I mean, lore and world building of any IP I have ever seen. Almost every insane thing that happens to the game has an explanation to it except for the Elder Dragons. Well, do Elder Dragons need an explanation? They're Elder Dragons, obviously. But on, I would, I should really play it. It also sounds like you can have a house, which is cute. And I love games where you can have houses. It's one of my favorite things. games where you can have houses. <laughs> Hello, Mocha Coffee. Welcome. Oh, thank you for following, Mocha Coffee. Thank you so much for being here. I might know who Mocha Coffee is. I don't know, though. Welcome. I do love games where you where I can have houses. Houses are good. I play a lot of games where you... There. Like, there's some games that just don't let you have a house, which is also... So what are we drawing? We are drawing this. Um, it is a, a whip that I have almost, I'm very, very close to being finished with. I'm just finishing the final touches. Um, they are characters from a thing, a uh, streaming game called Callisto 6. And they are adorable. And I love their relationship. And it is fan art for that show. Um, their names are Luma and Cass, and they're adorable, and they, on two episodes ago, they had the cutest game ever. Can you have houses in that game? <laughs> this is, um, from a RPG. So, technically, they, like, this is from a, uh, tabletop role-playing game. Um, it's a show from, uh, Geek and Sundry. It's a, uh, cyberpunk superhero RPG that they play. Um, and they do technically have a house. So yes! <laughs> it's called Blue Dolphin Base. And it's, it's, since it's an RPG, of course you can, you can have anything you want in an RPG. Especially houses. That's one of my favorite things about the, um, the, uh, the, the uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist is that halfway through the thing they just give you a house that's like, you did this thing have a house. It's wonderful. Um, also, okay, there's so many links. All right. Uh, you can also catch pets in the wilderness. Yes! Pets! Monster Hunter World, you are a game after my own heart, other than the fact that I have to fight giant beasts. But that can still be fun. And, uh, Poojies. 
Am I from Sweden? No. <laughs> I am from Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is in the U.S. Um, I'd love to go to Sweden at some point, though. That'd be cool. Do I have a Swedish accent? What's this music? It is from a uh, playlist uh, called non-copyrighted um, happy happy non-copyrighted music that I found on uh, YouTube. It's actually um, it's it's supposed to be from Cuphead, I think, but it's like electronic version. Probably Swedish. I don't know. It's like electronic version. It's called. It, the song is called H E U X Cuphead Electronic. It's pretty fun to draw, draw to you. Well, I know I'm technically allowed to, but I'd rather not run the risk of it actually being a thing. Just because I don't make a video out of it. Like a highlight? I do highlight all of my videos, but. This is just, you know, for safety and there's nothing wrong with not listening to non-copyrighted music. It's just fun. But yeah, once I finish this, Oh, that is really bright. I don't like that. And just, nope. Should it be lighter or darker? That's okay. And once I finish coloring these little things, this piece will be done and we'll work on the weave piece that I showed everyone earlier. And for Mocha Coffee, since you weren't here, this one. Oh, that was a it is a giant piece of something that I have yet to finish, and I just, you know, want to do it. It was from a, a, a weave game that I played at Gen Con this year. Oh my god, that's a pig. That is the cutest little pig in a sweater! Japan to win, that is adorable! They added more Poggy cut. Okay, has Iceborne already come out? Is that a thing that's already come out, or is that in beta? I wasn't sure. And is that a? And I'm assuming that's an expansion you have to buy, or does it just get updated with it? Like in WoW, when you have to, you know, buy a new thing. came out two days ago. Oh, that's really light. Maybe I should... Is that better? There, that's cute. I like that. All right. They're so cute. Look at them. It is, it is only out on console. Okay. Good to know, good to know, good to know. Well, I haven't even played regular Monster. Um, I haven't even played regular Monster Hunter yet, so. There's that. But, I might as well just get it for the cute pig costumes. But the base game takes about 
300 hours to beat, so no sweat. <laughs> yeah. The only game that I think I've played that more than 300 hours is Stardew Valley. Well, possibly also Breath of the Wild. I've played a lot of Breath of the Wild. It is done! Look at it! They're so cute! They're adorable. I love them. Yay! Save. Alright. Now kiss. Oh wait, you're a stationary image. <laughs> One whip done. We are be we ugh. we are being productive today, my friends. Woo! Look at this! Yay! I love them. All right, that means weave time, everyone. Completely different colors of canvas. Yay to completing things! Sorry if it was kind of boring. I was on the very last stretches, but that's what it's like completing a piece. You just kind of finish. Um, also, I should probably retweet my stream again. Oh, you brought ash in. Finn just threw ash in my room. Retweeted. Hi, Heavenies! Welcome! Aw, oh, thanks for Panduin. <laughs> and there's a cat cameo. Yes! Did Ash up? Yes! Look at her. Licking herself. This is Ash, everyone. My wonderful cat. Who I will make in Monster Hunter World because I just learned that that's a thing I can do. Hello. Anyways. She's wonderful. Um. Welcome to the stream! Alright. I think she does need some help. I'll just. I'll just be like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna be starting on a this thing that I showed in my very first stream that I still have not yet done. And both, I know Lucas is not here because he's cooking, but he was here earlier, and John will be back soon. And they were both in this game that I'm playing, so that, that we played, and then I'm doing art for. So let's hop into it. We're gonna, you're gonna be able to see how I draw humans. No time like the present, exactly. My Photoshop will be fast. Okay, this is my character, so this will be the easy one to start out with, because I know exactly what she looks like. Go dark blue. Just finished up on that piece and went for a walk. Yay! Welcome back, John. Well you did come back just in time. 
I just, I, here's the final for this one that I just finished. And then now we're working on the weave piece, which is going to be very interesting. I can friggin' figure out how to get a nose right. I'm glad you like the colors, yay! I really like the colors too. Those are my, as you can see by my layout, are also some of my favorite colors. How's Ash doing? So cleaning herself. All right. Photoshop work with me here. 